Ashley here with Grateful Art. Welcome to my channel. Today I would love to show you how to paint this beautiful sunset with these fields. If you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and the bell next to it so you're notified whenever I make a new video and you can learn to paint with me. Let's get started. What you need for this project is an 8 by 8 inch canvas panel, canvas, or piece of paper. I'm going to be using my heavy body acrylics. I've got titanium white, ivory black, yellow azo, thalo cyan blue, magenta, and thalo cyan green. These are listed in the description below. I'm also going to be using the same palette that I've used for all of my sunset paintings in the series. These brushes that I'm using are in the description below. I'm going to be using it from the set. There is um, an eight and a four round and a half size flat that I'll be using. I'll also be using a wash brush, any size will work, and then a toothbrush and a palette knife. And then this is my favorite palette to put my paints on. It keeps my paints wet and I can store them. And then you just need water and a paper towel and you're ready to go. First thing I'm going to paint is the sunset. I got my wash brush and I've just loaded it with yellow. I'm going to put it right there in the middle. This is going to be the glow of my sunset. And then I'm going to add a little bit of white to lighten it. Just right there in the middle. And notice how it softens that color. And I'm just going to push that color around until I run out of that color. Now I'm going to dip my brush into my magenta and over there on the left side I'm going to use my brush in a diagonal way and meet up with that yellow. I'm going to go all around my yellow in a diagonal way so even on the top there and on the side and if you need to go back and get some more paint on your brush go ahead I'm gonna ignore that right hand top corner for a little bit and then just get down below the yellow and on the side again very diagonal this is just gonna give some motion to the painting now I'm going to take my purple, so some blue and magenta, and I'm going to put it in the corner there, the bottom corner, and then the top right hand corner. So just a little bit of a different color. So I'm going to get that corner right up there. There you go. Now I can add a little bit more blue and get more of a purple if I like. I can also add more orange where I want. This is where I want you to be creative and put in your personal preferences. Don't worry about that yellow blob in the middle. That's going to be covered by a big stormy cloud. So right now just play around with blending your colors together and getting some really pretty colors down. Make sure that you go in a diagonal way, so you want to be diagonal, and then go from one edge to the other to blend nicely in between each color. And you can use oranges, magentas, purples, even a little bit more of the blue if you like, and have fun being creative. Don't worry about yours looking exactly like mine. If you'd like, you can get the reference photo to help you paint along. It's up there in the right hand corner. You can become a Grateful Art member and get reference photos, color mixing videos, and weekly art lessons. So there's a lot of fun perks in becoming a member. I'm just going to play with my sunset for a while until it's what I want it to look like. So go ahead and do the same for you. You can add as many layers as you want if you find that you are painting, um, you're lifting up your paint when you're adding another color on. Just wait for the bottom layer to dry first before you start adding on another layer. For blending, my best tip is to just go over it multiple times. The more you go over a certain section, the more it blends. 
Now, if you add a little bit of water to your brush, it will blend the colors a little bit better, but it will make those colors transparent so you'll be able to see the canvas underneath. So just be aware that there is a happy place for how much water you put on your brush and, um, and you don't wanna to put too much there. So less than 25% is what I say. Once you're happy with your sunset, you're ready to move on to the next step and you want to let that dry before you go on to that step. In this step, we're going to add the cloud. So I'm going to create a purple and notice how I changed my brush to the round brush. This isn't the smallest one. This is the bigger one that I had. I told you I was going to use in the beginning. Now I'm going to be using some different colors for my clouds, but notice how I'm going to leave the bottom flat and I'm going to create rounds at the top. So I'm just getting the shape of my cloud. I want to keep that shape round at the top with some several different rounds. And I am going to cover most of that sunset, so that's why it didn't really matter if it was perfect or not. The next thing that I'm going to do is start filling in my cloud. Now the thing is, I don't want to cover all of that yellow, so I'm going to focus there on the left side and just fill that in for now and make it flat on the bottom. And I'll just let you go ahead and do that. And then I want to have some streaks on the bottom, okay? So I made that purple streak down there add a little bit more magenta to my paint and then I can focus on just filling in that area. Now I'm going to start reaching my cloud over there to the right. Notice how I'm using a circular motion with my brush. So I don't want to have any hard edges here and I want there to be some dimension so there's different colors in there so notice there's dark areas and light areas and I can always go over this cloud this is the very first layer of the cloud and fix anything that I want in the end so even if it's not looking exactly the way I want right now it's okay I'm gonna create some more streaks there on the bottom going all the way to the right and some gaps in between them and then on the right I want to have some clouds forming so I'm creating those bubbles on top so circular motion with my brush and then I added a little bit of yellow to my brush but it was a little too much right there so I need to have some more contrast so I went in and got some more blue and purple again. But notice how I'm creating a little bit of a softer transition from the yellow to the purple of the cloud. So now I'm grabbing some blue, it's going to create more contrast and I'm going to add a little bit of shape onto the top of that cloud, it's a little pokey up there. Like I said, I can always go in and change anything that I want. See, I, I can add blue down there at the bottom and then I can go over it if I don't like it. So right now I'm being very playful because I'm not quite sure how I want my cloud to be at this point. So I'm kind of doing this from my imagination, which is a really fun way to paint. It's just a little bit harder because I'm not seeing how a cloud actually looks <laughs> and copying it so it'll just take me some time so notice how I've left the yellow there and I'm going to scrape off some of the paint to show even a little more of the yellow and that's going to be the yellow on top of the clouds glowing off of it so it's very easy to pull off the paint especially at this point which can be frustrating for some people if they find that they're pulling off their paint when they're trying to get it down. But at this stage when it's wet underneath, I can pull it off with a brush that is dry and doesn't have any paint on it. So I went and pulled that off and now I used that color that I pulled off to soften some of the color right there in the middle and blend a little bit more. 
So notice how my cloud just keeps forming and forming. So I'm going to make some more streaks. I'm using my magenta and my blue mostly, and sometimes I go into my yellow. And then I just fill it in. So right here where the yellow is, I really want that to shine through. So I don't want to cover it all. So I'm going to leave part of that yellow right there, glowing behind the cloud. So just make sure you don't cover all of that. So some of my layers are starting to dry now so I can go over the top of them. So I'm experimenting with this magenta, straight magenta over the purple. And I'm going to use the magenta to kind of blend and soften my clouds and brighten them up. Now I'm going to add some blue to create more of a contrast. It's a very strong contrast, but that's the next layer. And I want it to be a very dark, stormy cloud. So this is like a cloud that's about to send some rain to someone. And because I add that blue below, I'm going to add some of that blue on top of the cloud for some harmony. So you can decide based on your personal preference whether you like the blue more or you like the magenta or if you want to make your cloud even more on the orange side. This is a very fun, playful painting that's just about experimenting and enjoying the process. Now I'm going to start adding the rays of the sun. So I have yellow on my flat brush. And I'm going to add a little bit of yellow poking through between those blue streaks down there. And then I want to grab a little bit more yellow. And I'm going to create kind of a diagonal, a different diagonal, going out from the yellow. So if you want your yellow to be softened, just add a little bit of white to it. You can add your rays of yellow going at any direction you want. Um, I may change some of mine. <laughs> I may decide that I don't want them where I put them, but it's super easy to change them. You just take your paper towel and some water and you wipe it off because your under layer should be dry. So go ahead and choose some places for your diagonals of sunshine rays. The only thing I recommend is that you make sure that they are straight. They're coming out of one place. So they should be coming out from behind your cloud and where your yellow is. So if I create those diagonals going that direction, I have to make sure that they are slanted and they're going like kind of like a fan out from that yellow area. So I'm just going to have a lot of fun creating some rays. Notice I'm using my flat brush to do that. It's very easy to create lines with a flat tip brush. And notice how when I take from that yellow area from the clouds and I add more to it, then it really makes it look like the sun is shining from behind the clouds and there's this bright area right there. Now that my clouds are dry back behind it, I can add any more layers that I want on top of my clouds. So I could add some brighter colors if I want and just kind of blend them a little bit better so they're softer looking. So it's going to add a little more magenta in them, I think, and create a little bit better rounds at the top. So this is the time to make some changes to your clouds and make them how you like them. And then we can move on to the next step. In this step, we're going to start painting the land. So there in the background, I'm still using my flat brush and I'm creating a rolling hill. Notice how it's not straight across. There's some bumps in the middle. 
And I'm going to take that blue color that I just made and I'm going to add a little bit in my clouds for some harmony. Because I've added a new color, I've created a new color, I want to have that harmony. So I'm just adding a little bit here and there in my clouds. Okay, so now I can take that blue color and I can start filling in underneath the land that I just created. So most of this is going to be very dark because this is a dark cloud. It's creating the shadow on these rolling fields down below it. And so there'll be some places where there's light, but mostly it's going to be dark. So I'm just going to take my flat brush and I'm going to go across and cover that area. So I start with my black and pull that down. And then I am going to take my follow cyan green right there in the middle and add that color. A little bit of blue in there too, or purple to pull in the colors of the sunset. And then I'm gonna take my yellow and add it to the, the Thalo Cyan green. And it creates a brighter green and pull that color forward. So the closer the land gets to me, the brighter it's going to be. There's also going to be more contrast between the colors. Okay, so because back there, that's where the cloud is. It's covering most of that area. Okay, and I left that magenta in the very, very back to show that there's some light shining through, showing some of that land. Now I can take some of the color off. So I'm going to do that. So the color will come off sometimes because it's wet and trying to layer a color over another one when it's wet pulls it off. So now I'm going to add in some grasses. So I'm taking my flat brush still and I'm pulling up with my brush and at a diagonal I am creating grasses. So sometimes I'm pulling straight up, sometimes I'm at to the right diagonally and sometimes to the left. Okay, so grass has a lot of variety like that. Now I'm taking the black and making it dark on the bottom because it's thicker on the bottom. So there's some shadow there. And then when it comes to the top, then it's light because the light is bouncing off of those top little grasses. And I'm creating some little grass heads. So some seeds up there on the top. Go ahead and add anything you would like in this step and then sign your work and you are done. Thank you so much for painting with me. I hope you learned a lot from this tutorial and you had fun. If you haven't already, go ahead and check out my weekly art lessons. They're going to teach you how to become a better artist and all those things that you need to learn to be able to paint whatever it is you want. Also, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and the bell next to it so that you're notified whenever I make a new video. And you can watch more videos right here and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!